Good evening. Good evening. Uh, if you don't mind the seat, preferably up closer so that people can hear each other. My name is Bud Hattenberg, and I would love to so thank you for coming out tonight. Um, it is my privilege to moderate this kind of music style music candidate tonight, which is designed to give us, the voters of Western Franklin County, the opportunity to see those who we seek to represent the second version of the district in the House of Representatives and in the Senate in the towns of the Franklin County of Ashfield, Charlemont, Conway, Hawley, Keith, Monroe, and Rose. So um, it's a great opportunity for us to learn more so we can be informed. Um, before we begin, this is yet another occasion where we can thank very much for having the greatest sheet for underwriting this conference. It's really 
the Western Mass District because it's really in three different counties. I mean, I've got 11 towns in Berkshire County, seven towns in Franklin County, and three towns in Hampshire County. I have almost as many communities outside of Berkshire County as I have within Berkshire County. And when you're in the, uh, uh, a district this big, which stretches from Richmond on the New York border all the way to Northfield on the New Hampshire border, you have to make sure you're a representative for the entire district. And I have been there, I have, I've been doing the job of representing the communities that, that are in the 2nd Berkshire District, and I hope to do so again in the next two years. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
and completing the MA in the Urban Environmental Policy at Tufts University. Ben? Thanks, Doug. Sixteen years ago, on a summer lot like this one, I spent my days going from town to town, door to door, event to event, with my father, the late Berkshire District Attorney Jerry Allen. And on those days, the thing that really caught my attention, the thing that drew me to public service, to politics, was how people wanted to connect with those elected officials that they met, even if it was just a candidate. How people wanted to reach out and tell their stories, talk about the hurdles they were trying to overcome, and maybe talk with that candidate about the issues and how they could address them. Since that summer, I've taken every opportunity to prepare myself for a life in public service. Like Buzz said, I worked in the congressional offices of Congressman William Delma from the Cape, Richie Neal from Springfield, and for two years I served as our congressman's senior advisor on housing, budget, tax, homeland security, and foreign affairs. My experience in the nation's capital taught me many things. But the most important thing it taught me was that our politics is growing stale and our people are suffering for it. I believe that if we want to get beyond that, if we want to help people reconnect with their government, and realize the future that they envision for their communities, that we need to start by electing a state senator who will bring a fresh energy and a new perspective to the office. Someone who will stand up and demand that decisions are made for future generations to come and not future elections. As your state senator, I hope to do that. So I thank you for this opportunity tonight, and I look forward to meeting you all. Democratic candidate for the state senate, Chris Hodgkin. Chris Hodgkin was raised in Maine, Massachusetts, the youngest of five children in a single parent home. He's a graduate of Berkshire Community College and the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. He's been a teacher, an EMT, a police officer, and a volunteer firefighter. Chris also served as a state representative from the fourth most Berkshire district for 20 years. Chris? Uh, thank you very much, guys. It's a great uh, pleasure to be here tonight. Um, some of you came in the door and uh, saw a, a former legislator here, Jay Healy. Uh, Jay is helping me out big time uh, in West County, and uh, we welcome him. He's a new uh, convert to the Democratic Party, so we should give him a hand on that. <laughs> Uh, I come to this race as somebody uh, with, with a passion, a passion of public service. I served in the House for 20 years. Uh, I left uh, on my own board. I served as a top uh, CEO and executive of Fortune 500 company. And like the song goes, is that all there is? Um, when this race opened up, I decided that uh, I love being uh, in public service. I love the legislature. And I love changing you know, the laws to benefit all of us. When I came in, and they were working on the bridge here uh, on 116. I remember years ago the fights we had over bridges. When you remember the state had all sorts of policies that the bridges had to look like a, a runway at Logan. And I'm glad to say that folks like Jay Healy, myself, Will Benson, uh, we were the three founders of the World Caucus to fight for issues like regional school transportation and 100% reimbursement, like our pilot programs, like recognizing the importance of bringing our monies back here to our communities to keep our property taxes low, but most importantly, making sure that we invest in our children, which we are not doing. We are the first generation, my generation, to give our children less. We're down to a level of 2001 in uh, funding of education. I like to be the state center to reverse that, and I look forward to telling you more about what I'd like to do as the evening goes on. Thank you very much. Democratic candidate for the state senate, Helen Sherry. Helen Sherry was raised in Worthington and is a graduate of Gateway Regional High School at the University of Massachusetts. She spent 15 years working in investment technology, leaving Boston as a vice president of Putnam Investments, where she was responsible for the processing of $400 billion in assets daily. She co founded a local firm that employs, employs over 70 people with good jobs and health benefits. She and her husband, David Potter, lives in Worthington. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. I'm one of the few rural candidates who have ever run for the Office of State Senate. I've lived in Worthington almost all of my life. I went
went to a retail school system as do my children. I know we don't share every idea, but we do have a strong sense of connection. We share values, our family, our friends, our spirituality, a love for the land, a respect for independence, and a desire for a way of life that's fast disappearing from the American landscape. What we share makes us shareholders in each other's futures. 34 of the towns in this Senate district have less than 2,000 people, and yet we don't have the critical mass to sway votes our way. So we don't get a fair share of our dollars from the state. Our smart growth policies are really based on formulas that favor larger communities, not the family farms, not our forested landscapes. Like you, I've watched our family farms get eaten without any thought to the long-term value of the land. I've seen farmers close up shop because they just can't afford to take care of it anymore. And that's not something I read in a newspaper. It's something that I saw in my own backyard. I am a business person. I brought jobs to Western Massachusetts. Over 70 good paying jobs with benefits. And I was a former vice president of technology at an investment company. I hired hundreds of people. My ability to create jobs, to build consensus, to understand technology, and to understand the rural issues that face us are unparalleled in this race. My stance on issues, along with my business background, has gotten all of the rural communities excited. It's what's been building momentum in my campaign. It's what's gotten me excited about this race. And I'm very happy to be here standing up for you. Thank you.
Everybody hear the question? No. No. Um, the question, as I understood it, was uh, to, to Stefan that uh, he had written blaming the legislature for the big dig. And what would he do as a legislator to avoid those crack balls? Um, because in Mr. Herman's view, it's the administration, not the legislature's fault. And for Mr. Geyer, what's the question for Mr. Geyer? Well, is, is, does he hold the same view that it was the legislature, not the administration's fault? And what can he do, or what should the legislature have done to keep tabs on the administration? Thank you. Maybe we'll use the microphone for a question. Mr. Geyer first. Okay. Okay, thank you. It's important that when we, we think about the big dig that we keep some facts in mind. Fact number one, the big dig started 20 years ago. Uh, it was a project of mammoth proportions not ever seen before in the Northeast of the United States. A huge project. The second thing to keep in mind when we think about the big dig and oversight control is you have to understand how government works and government in Massachusetts works. And right now, for how it's been is, the Massachusetts Turnpike Authority has had control over the big dig. The Massachusetts Turnpike Authority is made up of people who are appointed by the governor. So the last four Republican governors have appointed the people who run the Massachusetts Turnpike Authority, including Matt Morello, who was just recently, um, uh, I don't know how to put that, released, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, what, you know, the, the big dig, um, you know, the other contention that's being made is that all of the money that's being spent on road projects, that should be spent on road projects in Western Massachusetts, is being spent in this part of the state. Back in 1997, I think Chris probably will remember this better than I would, um, the, legislator, the legislature voted that the state would spend up to $400 million on road projects outside of the big state going forward. We would, we would do away with the tolls on the first four exits of the Massachusetts Turnpike, and the tolls from west and east would go to pay for big, big uh, repairs going forward. Um, you know, if you think about that $400 million, look at road projects like the 116 redo going on right now down here. You look at the bridge projects going on in 112. You look at the, the bridge project going on on 116. Um, and you look at the bridge project going on in 91 and number two. There is money being spent in this part of the state. Is this as much as I'd like to see being spent on here? Absolutely not. But we, we should move forward. We should remember what the facts are with the big day. When the tragedy happened on July 10th, the legislature did take action. We approved an emergency bill that gave Governor Romney control over the big day. The inspections are ongoing, and thankfully, they're only they're finding problems with not as much as we anticipated, and the problems are being corrected. The big day is safe.